Bregman turning it around on this road trip. A struggle in Yankee Stadium, but he has been hot here in Baltimore. Jordan Alvarez and Kyle Tucker, the two lethal lefties in the middle of the lineup. Yiner Diaz will catch it bat fifth today. There is John Singleton in the Astros lineup for the first time since the 15th season. Mauricio Dubon in left field. Jeremy Pena will catch it bat eighth. And Jake Myers patrol center field. Jake will bat ninth. Well, here he is, Dean Kramer. He's got great numbers against the Astros. We showed you that 2-0 record. He's only allowed eight hits and two starts against the Astros. His only career complete game shutout against the Astros again last season. But overall on the season will be his 24th start, 14th start here at Camden Yards. 4.61 is his ERA. And if the Astros have the ability, they'd like to add to that home run number. And here's our StatCast 3D powered by Google Cloud showing you the pitch arsenal against Kramer. Right-handed hitter is going to see that cutter, curveball, sinker, and changeup four-seam action. Left-handers are going to see that cutter and changeup a little more frequently with that four-seam fastball mixed in there. Those are the starts last time against Hughes, and he, he was very successful with that cutter. So I would imagine, like he's been doing most of this season, he will be heavy on that fastball, heavy on that cut fastball until the Astros can figure him out. He has given up 11 home runs on the fastball this season. Defensively behind Dean Kramer today, the outfield has Austin Hayes in center. We have seen Jorge Mateo, Colton Kowser, and now Austin Hayes, three different center fielders in this three-game series for the Orioles. They expect to get Cedric Mullins back shortly. Anthony Santander in right, Ryan O'Hearn will be in left. Ramon Urias coming off a gold glove season last year for the Orioles at third base. Gunnar Henderson, Adam Frazier, and Ryan Mountcastle round out your Orioles infield James McCann behind the plate for the second game in this three game series. So we're ready to go just about 13 minutes late from a 1235 Eastern start Jose Altuve digs in Altuve carrying an 11 game hitting streak to the plate. One of the only Astros with good numbers against Dean Kramer he's four for seven with a couple of doubles against this right hander. As Kramer faces the Astros for the third time in his career ready to go and we are underway with a first pitch off the plate for a ball one and oh. So if there was such thing as a little rain delay in the beginning I guess that's what they're going to call it it ends up being a 13 minute rain delay. Hopefully that's the last time we'll say that today as Jose Altuve as you see with that good batting average since coming off the I.L. Takes a called strike. David Rackley calling the balls and strikes today. Altuve with his best numbers in any stadium here in Baltimore, a career 400 hitter here. As he grounds one, what a play by Uri as we talked about him winning the gold glove. He just robbed Altuve of a double down the line. Did he ever? He was playing in, protecting against the bunt. And Altuve making a bid for an extra base hit down that third base line. It was snagged by Urias. Good reaction play right here. And from the knee, a very strong throw to first. So Altuve robbed of a hit. That'll bring up Alex Bregman. Bregman five for nine in this series with a couple of runs batted in. Alex starts the day playing his 115th game out of the Astros 116 on the year. Takes a pitch in it's one and one. Rangers with the day off Astros start the day two games back. Trying to go five and two on this road trip into New York at Baltimore. That ball hit to center field and backing up on it is Hayes and he reaches up and makes the play. Didn't quite get back far enough initially and had to kind of reach up to snag that line drive. Bregman hits it hard but he's out number two. Yeah I think Hayes was a little surprised. Kind of took that Willie Mays Hayes approach to it with that route, but he was able to make up for it, jump up a little bit to make that catch. It was hit hard. Now two outs, the base is clear. Here's Jordan Alvarez. Jordan just kind of golfs one into right field. That'll be a base hit. 
That looked like the first practice swing on the driving range to start your morning getting ready for golf. Yeah, he just made better contact than either of us would have. <laughs> You're not smiling over <laughs> there. Mountcastle's appreciating it too. Go back and see where it was on our MD Anderson strike zone. Yeah, that was just a little knockdown wedge on that breaking ball in. Unorthodox swing for Jordan, but he'll take it. You know that. He's still cracking up about it. <laughs> Al Kyle Tucker. What a series for Tuck. Tuck hitting. That ultimate grand slam as defined by Elias down three in the ninth inning hitting a grand slam. It's only happened three times in Astros history. Tuck doing so on Tuesday and then kicking off yesterday's game with a two run home run. The Astros never trailed after that. Pitches wide one and one. This has been a season for Dean Kramer where lefties are much better against him than righties including 14 of the 23 home runs allowed and he has allowed 14 of those home runs of those 23 here at home. Kind of goes hand in hand with lefties doing well. This is not a home run park for right hand hitters. So I fouls that one away it's one and two. Guess who's on deck. That's Yiner Diaz for those listening at home. <laughs> Yiner was introduced to us on Tuesday night whenever he was on deck. You always knew based on that batting weight being knocked off the bat a different sound than anybody else. There he is Yiner Diaz on deck. You'll hear it all day. Yeah audible cue. <laughs> Swing and a miss Kramer strikes out Tucker to end the inning. So a hit couple of hard hit baseballs but no run scored in the inning. His 22nd appearance this season. 407 is that ERA. The last three starts, he's been consistent. He's picked up two wins in the last three starts, but the last three starts, he has averaged six innings and two earned runs with four strikeouts in the last three starts. Here's a lineup that Brandon Hyde will send out for the Orioles today. He's got Adley Rushman back in the top spot. He's DHing today. Gunnar Henderson will bat second. Anthony Santander, two out of the three guys, switch hitters at the top of the lineup. And you've got Ryan O'Hearn, another lefty. Ryan Mountcastle, Adam Frazier hitting sixth. And the final three in the lineup are Austin Hayes. He's been as consistent as anybody in their lineup. Ramon Urias and James McCann will catch. And bat nine, three righties to round out the lineup, but five of the first six will hit lefty, including a couple of switch hitters like Rutschman against Hunter Brown. Adley had that seven game RBI streak snapped in last night's game. Goes after this pitch and sends it pretty deep in the left center field. Jake Myers will watch this one, it'll be gone. In the corner, calling for a review is both Mauricio Dubon and Jake yeah. Myers. They feel like a fan reached over the wall. They're spraying those fans as they do after a home run, but we'll have to see if this one is an actual home run for Rutschman or a fan interference double. Yeah, I've got both Dubon and Myers out there raising their hands just from my science line of sight from here. It looked like somebody reached over that wall. Right? Not many lefties go out there. No, that's that's some crazy pop going to the opposite field. I want to say there's only been one or two lefties that have hit one out since the wall has been pushed back in left field. Well, I'm sure one of them I know is Shohei Otani. Yes. So they're going to review this. Larry Vanover will make the announcement. Boundary review doesn't even have to be a challenge. Crew chief can go ahead and make this call on his own. Uh, we'll see what Larry says. This is a crew chief review of the home run ball in center field. So they'll look at this one. Did a fan reach over the wall in left center? It was in that deep part of the left center field wall right in that corner. And what, what's crazy to me is it looked like it could have curved over the 376 sign <laughs> towards that corner. Right next to the 398, so it could have gone over the cameraman's head that you see right there. And eventually, we'll see a replay of this because you could see Myers had to adjust that route. And there's definitely reaching over, but I'm not sure if they're going to be able to judge if that would have 
Mattress from Supermo is going to show you that replay. Hey, you need the angle on the wall here, which we have in our right field wall at Minute Maid Park, but I'm not sure if they have it here at Camden Yards. The fan wasn't a call. review, the call in the field out. stands, home run. Yeah, it's going to be a home run. So Rutschman with his second home run of the series. A rare lefty home run into left center field to the deepest part. Yeah, that was a pretty good swing on a curveball. Hunter has allowed a home run now in five consecutive starts. Most of the damage he's allowed in his last three have been via the home run. Only six runs allowed on four home runs. So here's Gunnar Henderson. He grounds one the other way. Bregman by himself on that side. Makes the play to John Singleton, and that's the first out of the inning. Speaking of Singleton, here's the Astros starting defense presented by Xfinity. We haven't talked about John Singleton playing the field for the Astros since 2015, but he's a first base today alongside Jose Altuve. Jose Abreu getting the day off. Jeremy Peña and Alex Bregman on the left side. Mauricio Dubon will be in left today. Chaz McCormick a scratch from the lineup. Jake Myers in center and Kyle Tucker in right. Yiner Diaz has been catching Hunter Brown for the past few weeks, and there's a strike to Anthony Santander. Santander along with Adley Rutschman playing the most games for the Orioles this year. This is game number 110 for Anthony in their 115th contest. 0 2 the count. Swing and a miss. How about Hunter Brown coming back after that home run to get a ground out and then a strikeout on three pitches of Santander? Unfazed. Fastball slider, fastball. Up out of the zone at 96, gets the swing and miss. First strike out of the game for Hunter. Now face the cleanup hitter, Ryan O'Hearn. O'Hearn takes a firm fastball for a strike. It's 0 1. By the way, that is the first Orioles left handed hitter with an opposite field home run since they moved the fences. How about that? So 116 games into the second season. And Adley Rutschman becomes the first Oriole left hand hitter to hit one out to the left. That one missing wide is two and one. Mentioned O'Hearn having kind of a renaissance since coming over to Baltimore, longtime Kansas City Royal. Hitting 300 this year, which if he was qualified would be the best mark on the Orioles, but in his five seasons with Kansas City, hit 219 across those five years, and last year hit 239, but this year he has found his stroke with a 300 average and an 835 OPS. Then you go from the Grand Canyon to an arena like this. It's going to help the cause. Yeah, lefties like it here. Absolutely. Short porch. We well, we've shown that right center field gap. At the end of the scoreboard out there in right field been very attractive for Kyle Tucker at least so far in this series. But that left field, that cutout is massive. Yeah, it is one of the biggest game changers we've ever seen, similar to what they did in reverse at Comerica Park in Detroit. And they're trying to do it. Pecco in San Diego. Bring those walls in. Two two pitches fouled back. That previous foul ball, if Julia hadn't had her coffee yet, definitely woke her up. That was a rocket into the camera well off the netting. There you see what lefties deal with. 318 down the line and that out of town scoreboard providing the right field wall. Yeah, Pecco's about a decade and a half too late. <laughs> There's some bitterness <laughs> just a little bit between me and Phil Nevin. Let's take a look, Blubber, at what we used to have here in 2021 and what is currently the outfield wall and left. That is, you have to feel pretty strongly to eliminate that many seats at a ballpark like that to make it competitive. 
Good luck signing some right-handed hitting free agents. We talked about this in the broadcast Tuesday, but there was a mini celebration the first time the Astros were in town when somebody finally hit one out to <laughs> in left batting in practice. batting practice. Yeah. <laughs> they were taking aim at it. They had high hopes, but I, it's one thing to move the fence back, but if you remember when it was in, it was still an, what, a seven or eight foot wall. And then you move it back another what feels like 30 feet and then add the height that wall makes it that much tougher. Good bounce back for Hunter Brown after the solo home run by Rushman getting a ground as far as power and RBIs 14 to 19 35 to 51 and he's only played in 70 games. I think Gunner right now is the favorite as the American League rookie of the year voting still seven and a half weeks to go but. Those numbers for Yiner compare favorably in fewer games as Yiner leads off here in the second inning against Dean Kramer. Yiner hits the ball high in the air in the right center field. It's carrying pretty deep. Santander back. That ball's gone. Yiner Diaz opposite field pop. A high towering fly ball that kept carrying for home run number 15 on the year. The bringer of Yiner. Showing some opposite field pop right in front of Gunnar Henderson and these Baltimore Orioles fans. Talked about that right center field gap being pleasant for left handed hitters. Right handed hitters can take advantage of it too when you got pop like Yiner. Yiner continues to hit well when he's the starting catcher, starting his second game on this seven game road trip. He came in hitting 336 with 1,014 OPS and eight home runs. In his 33 starts behind the plate, and he adds to those totals with a home run here to tie the game. Here's John Singleton. Singleton with a line drive. It is caught by Mountcastle. Singleton, who had an at bat or a good plate appearance in Tuesday's game, drawing a walk ahead of the Kyle Tucker Grand Slam, hits it hard, but he's out number one. Back to that swing by Yiner. Took an off speed pitch, too. That was that cutter down and away. That's the first home run the Astros have hit off Dean Kramer making his third start against the Astros. Yeah, Kramer gives up some home runs. That's his 15th home run allowed here at home, which is second most in all of baseball. But the Astros hadn't connected in their first two starts against him. And here's Mauricio Dubon. So he is human. <laughs> Dubon takes what in for a ball one and one. Mauricio Dubon in the lineup in left field. We initially thought Chaz McCormick was going to start in left. He's got a lot of friends and family in town for this series. What's the latest with Chaz, Julia? Chaz made a diving catch yesterday, uh, just landed on his knee real hard. So a bruised left knee for him. Said yesterday, felt it not too bad, but when he woke up this morning, a little bit worse. So just off today, he said he'll be back, ready to go tomorrow. There you go. You know, Chaz wanted to play today in front of the fans that came down from Pennsylvania to see him. He was out in the stands last night when we were leaving the stadium. Probably had about 40 or 50 people he was hanging out with. Mauricio pops one high in the air on a 3-1 pitch. Easy play for Austin Hayes looking up into the Hayes. That's the second out of the inning. I don't bring up Jeremy Pena. It's been a good series for JP. You can see what he's done his last three games here in Baltimore, four for eight with a couple of RBIs, both RBIs coming in his final at bat on Tuesday and Wednesday. Pena takes one off the plate for a ball, one and oh. Astros left New York trailing the Texas Rangers by two and a half games. Astros knew the Rangers had a three game series in Oakland the team with the worst record in baseball while the Astros played here in Baltimore against the team with the best record in the AL. And the Astros thought well if you leave town here having not lost any ground that would be OK based on the opponents the Rangers and Astros were facing but now the Astros can actually leave town gaining ground if they can win this game today with Oakland taking one out of three against the Rangers winning that game yesterday. 
Still a long way to go, but this was a tough road trip on the schedule going into Yankee Stadium and Camden Yards, and the Astros trying to end up with a five and two trip. Kramer coming back down three and zero now has the count full. Yesterday, how Jeremy Pena's stats through 105 games pretty much mirroring where he was last year. Last year at this time, as this is his 105th game, JP was batting 242 at 45 RBIs. This year, 244 at 41 runs batted in as he strikes out here to end the inning. Astros do tie it up though on the Yiner Diaz home run. Big swing from Yiner helping out his battery mate, matching Adley Rutschman's. Solo home run. He's done his share of DH for the Astros this year as well. well. We have a 1 1 game heading to the bottom half of the second inning. Hunter Brown facing Ryan Mountcastle. Hunter did face the Baltimore Orioles once last year. It was out of the bullpen. It's only one inning of work against the Orioles last season. Here's a called strike to Mountcastle. It's 1 1. Ryan coming in with an 11 game hitting streak going including a 472 foot home run on Tuesday which was the longest home run hit here by an Oriole in the StatCast era. This one grounded towards Pena three hops to Jeremy and his throw in time to get Mountcastle for the first out of the second. Now to bring up Adam Frazier. Frazier has been dealing with a little bit of a thumb issue making his third start in nine games but he is starting back to back days after sitting out against Fromber Valdez on Tuesday. And he takes a pitch for a strike 0 and 1. Hunter does not quite get the same percentage of ground ball outs as Fromber Valdez but. And he's going well. He is going to be getting a lot of balls on the ground. He's second in the American League behind his teammate Fromber in ground ball percentage. And you look at the frame and you see the velocity. You just assume that Hunter Brown's going to be a strikeout type guy, but he's not afraid to go to contact. And that fastball curveball usually get those ground balls for him. Yeah, last three starts, Plumber, you mentioned all quality starts, six innings, two runs in every outing, but only four strikeouts in all three of those outings. So he hasn't had the big strikeout total recently. He has struck out as many as 10 against Oakland back in May. Yeah, that curveball gets a ground ball rate of 63%. Fastball right around 43%. There's another ground ball. That might have been on the splitter. It was. Start your weekend off right with Friday Night Fireworks presented by Conoco Phillips at. Minute Maid Park every Friday features a post game fireworks show with a special soundtrack. Get your tickets today at Astros.com slash fireworks. Should be a fun weekend against the Angels. Friday night will be the return of Justin Verlander to the Minute Maid Park mound. Verlander was on hand earlier this year accepting his ring. As a member of the New York Mets and now he'll make his triumphant return wearing the 35 in orange. That'll be a good game to be at the ballpark. You've got fireworks Friday and Verlander's first 23 start with the Astros at home. Yeah, there's only three games on this home stand, so you better get out there, take a nap on this weekend. You're going to miss it. And Saturday's Hall of Fame ceremonies. Yeah, that's going to be exciting. And the Angels are kind of in a desperate mode right now. They did win their last two games of that series against the Giants. To get back to 500, but the Angels can't afford to lose many series from here on out as they're at 500, and they'll get that guy, Justin Verlander, to start the series tomorrow against Reed Detmers, the lefty for the Angels. That one's up to Austin Hayes. The count's three and one.
Hayes accounted for both Orioles runs yesterday with a two run home run his 10th on the year. Swings through that pitch it's three and two well, slider backed up Not that 91 mile an hour slider. Sometimes backup sliders work. It's the best pitch in baseball <laughs> sometimes too. You get the cement mixer will actually just kind of rest out over the plate. The backups just kind of you could see kind of reversed the slider natural movement. Looked like just a BP sinker BP fastball coming in. So now the counts full for Hunter. And a swing and a miss. Hunter Brown since that opening home run has retired the next six. Three ground outs, three strikeouts. Nicely done by the rookie right hander. Third inning. Astros and Orioles tied at one. Julia, one of the best, as you know, social media influencer, usually takes great pregame picks. A little bit hurt and disappointed that on a day we we're all wearing the same shirt, we did not get a pregame. We don't pick. qualify. I totally forgot. Sorry. It's okay. Post game pick? Yes. Grab ball to short backhanded. And Gunnar Henderson has a very good arm. A rookie shortstop making a play on Jake Myers for the first out. One of the rare days that we all have the exact same very rare shirt on. I mean, you and I don't inadvertently make it happen every once in a while, <laughs> but to have Julia in on the action is rare. Yes. Here's Jose Altuve robbed on a great play by Ramon Urias his first time up. And this time Urias won't be able to rob him because it's over his head and down the line. Altuve loves hitting here 400 career hitter as he picks up another base hit here in Baltimore. It's a double with one out 12 game hitting streak for Tuve. I think he was explaining to Frazier he had to hit it higher. He did a good job. He had a little bit of an uppercut right there and it kind of created some top spin. So it just enough to get over Urias' head, get down in time to stay fair. Altuve with 49 career hits now in 122 at bats. And he's only 15 shy of 2,000 as he picks up a hit. Here's Alex Bregman. Bregman takes a fastball for a strike. Yeah, I've got to be brutally honest, though. I get kind of bored with you every time you say, here's Altuve in this ballpark hitting 310, 320. I mean, 400 is pretty good, though. Yeah, but it's Altuve. It's, I mean, the guy hits like 390 everywhere on the road. <laughs> He's unbelievable. It's his best number of any visiting ballpark here in Baltimore. He and his buddy Jordan Alvarez share great moments here. Altuve obviously a longer stretch in his career than Alvarez. This is like Oakland of the East. After Jordan. Jordan and Altuve. Yeah that's right. He had that long old road hitting streak in the Oakland Coliseum mm -hmm. or whatever it's called. I think that works. Ricky Henderson field. I like that better. Alex in protect mode here down 0 and 2. Beat you at tic tac toe. You've got no chance. <laughs> now, Tuve and Frazier have had a running conversation since that double. That are in second baseman, both of them. Alex continues to battle down in the count 0 and 2. Bregman lined out to center field his first time up, hit the ball hard, but caught by Austin Hayes. That's just good to see the Astros putting together better at bats against Kramer. That one grounded towards the left of Henderson, so Altuve able to cross over. Gunner makes the play to first. That's the second out of the inning. Yeah, I agree with you, Blummer. When a pitcher like a Dean Kramer, not a long time in the league, but great success in his two previous starts against the Astros, if he gets out to a good start in this game, all of a sudden you're thinking, here we go again. Oh, man. Yeah, you don't want to let that momentum continue for him. You want to let him know that you're on notice and you're keen on some of these pitches. See if we can get Jordan to take a full swing. 
Jordan served one into right field his first time up and takes a 95 mile an hour pitch for a strike 0 and 1. Jordan two for five coming in now three for six in his career against Kramer. Also has a couple of walks. That one's off the plate one and one. We have predicted many times that at some point Jordan's going to end up with one of those baseball plaques on Utah Street. It's just a matter of time. He does have five career home runs here and 12 games played in the stadium. Got after a fastball and fouled it back. It's one and two. There you see those little circles on Utah Street. Every one of those little baseball plaques represents a home run hit out there. That one's in two and two. Trying to tie up Jordan with that little bit of a cutter just in off the MD Anderson strike zone. That one misses up and in, and now all of a sudden it's three and two. Kyle Tucker waits on deck. Pick your poison in this part of the lineup for the Astros. Two of the best lefty hitters in the game. Jordan Alvarez and Kyle Tucker back to back. We mentioned it last night. Dusty Baker not afraid to use these guys in back to back spots in the lineup despite the fact that the Orioles had three lefties in their pen for the first two games. They have two today. Danny Coulomb was put on the IL so two lefties available but Dusty likes what he sees with Jordan hitting in front of Tucker. I enjoy it. This is one of those at bats too where Jordan is seeing a lot of pitches. And they keep tying him up a little bit on the inside with velocity and cut. But if he's able to get those arms extended, that'll give him an opportunity to do damage. Staying in there. And they came in too far. That'll be a walk. Jordan fouling off multiple two strike pitches, draws a walk to put runners on the corners for Kyle Tucker. Flashback to the early 2000s this Saturday when the Astros take on the Angels. 10,000 fans will receive a Kyle Tucker pinstripe jersey courtesy of Houston Methodist. Get your tickets now at Astros.com slash promotions. That game Saturday will feature the return of J.P. France to the starting rotation. J.P. worked out of the bullpen as a piggyback with Jose Urquidy at Yankee Stadium. Be a 6:15 start on Saturday, Hall of Fame Saturday at the ballpark. Here is Tuck. Tucker struck out his first time up. Takes one down and in for a ball, one and zero. Tucker with 10 RBIs on this road trip, seven of them in the two games here in Baltimore. He's up to second now in the American League in RBIs, trailing only Adolis Garcia. Tucker has 84 runs batted in. Garcia has 89. Well, you get a good idea of what Alvarez and Tucker can do to a pitcher because right now you're seeing Kramer stress a little bit because he's trying to be a little bit too fine. Yiner on deck. <laughs> trying to be a little bit too fine with some of these pitches. So when you start to get fine on those edges, sometimes they drop off the edge down or they break off the inside edge on the inside because you're trying to just lay it on the edges not make a mistake may have gotten away with one he did Tucker got it off the end of the bat and popped it high in the air to center Tuck wishes he could see that pitch again on a 2 0 count instead it's the final out of the inning hit walk two men left on Astros and Orioles tied at one hoping hoping to pitch well again today and this is a place guys that brings back some mixed 
feelings for him. <laughs> it was his first relief appearance for the Astros, and that was a time where they were trying to test him a little bit, challenge him in that role, knowing that they might use him in the bullpen for the postseason. He got out there, guys, struggled a bit, loaded the bases, but he found his way out of it. So, like I said, mixed emotions when he thinks about the last time he was on this mound. Yeah, they gave him a few starts, and you're right, Julia, they wanted to see what he could do coming out of the pen to figure out what that looked like for the postseason. But the th great thing about that outing, it was September 24th of last year, was his ability to work into trouble, which he didn't enjoy, but then work <laughs> out of trouble, and basically show no nerves against a major league team with the bases loaded in that inning. Now you got to see a little bit of the poise and a little bit of the stuff because it's nice to have a little opportunity like that in the regular season. You wouldn't want to have him being tested for the first time in the postseason. So got to test his mental fortitude and ability in that inning and got out of it. So he allowed singles to Ramon Urias, Austin Hayes, and Rubenet Odor last year. Bases loaded, nobody out. Then struck out Jorge Mateo. Connor Henderson pinch hit for Robinson Chirinos and grounded out on a force out at home. And then he got Cedric Mullins to end that inning. He worked around a bases loaded no out scenario. And that was in a seven to six game. Here's Ramon Arias who sends this one to right field pretty well hit Tucker going back still going back and that one is off the wall goes behind Tucker Arias is thinking about three Tucker slips on his throw back in and the throw by Pena a little bit wide. Arias ends up with a triple. There is some serious carry out to right field at Camden Yards. Got up out of the zone to get to this fastball. They've been attacking some of these pitches up in the zone. Took kind of a funky hop out there. But Urias off to the races gets a three bagger out of it. Well, the Astros yesterday worked around a leadoff triple to Adley Rutschman. As Christian Javier would strike out Gunnar Henderson and Anthony Santander to help get out of that inning. Now a leadoff triple for Ramon Urias, and now James McCann, the nine hitter, will bat. Shows bring the infield about halfway here with Arias on third and nobody out. First pitch down for a ball, 1 0. Oh. We just talked about Hunter Brown getting tested. He's going to get tested right here. Try and keep that leadoff triple at third base. McCann rockets one over the head of Hunter Brown. That'll be a base hit and an RBI. The Orioles regain the lead. It's now two to one. Well, both catchers providing the offense so far for the Orioles. McCann with the RBI single after the Rushman solo home run. Slider at the top part of the zone. Can rifle that one right back the middle at 106.2 over the head of Hunter Brown. So here is Adley Rutschman. Came the first Oriole left hand hitter, switch hitter batting lefty, to hit one out the opposite way, and he hit it to the deepest part of the corner in left center field. Distance on that Rutschman home run was 412 feet. Just into that first row out there in the spray zone. That's right near the bullpen to the left center. 2 0 the count. Foul to play 2 1. Rutschman trying to do his part to avoid a sweep. We've mentioned in our ramp up before the game that they have not been swept since Adley Rutschman joined the team last year. 
May 21st big league debut and 75 straight series without a sweep. That one's wide three and one. Last year Adley finished second in the rookie of the year balloting. Losing out to the Mariners star Julio Rodriguez. Now the counts three and two. There goes the runner and the pitch is swung on and fouled out of play. McCann picks his spots. He has three steals and three attempts this year. Three two count Rutschman at the plate probably gives you a good opportunity just to get in motion. Pretty good hitter at the plate. Hunter Brown throws enough strikes to where you're not worried about pitch being out of the zone. But not a high strikeout guy either so contact is probably going to happen. And it's got a good walk to strikeout ratio 66 walks just 72 strikeouts very similar to the Alex Bregman numbers that we've seen in the past. And this year the Kyle Tucker numbers have been similar to the Bregy numbers. McCann not a good start and that's a called strike. This is going to be a strike him out throw him out double play. How about that. Rushman takes a called strike. McCann did not have a good start off first and Yiner Diaz throws out yet another runner. Beautifully done right there. Big play for Hunter Brown. Gets that backdoor slider at 92 miles an hour. The call at home plate by David Rackley and then the throw down by Yiner Diaz completes that strike him out throw him out. It's a tough play for a catcher. You got to hold your ground and make sure that the umpire sees that pitch thoroughly before you pop out of there and make the throw. It's the 10th caught stealing for Yiner Diaz in 28 attempts on the season. And easily gets McCann caught stealing for the first time this year. Latest baseball savant numbers have Yiner Diaz as the strongest throwing arm in all of baseball. Niners arm strength 85.4 just barely ahead of Christian Bethencourt for the best arm strength of any catcher as he is also at 85.4 of a Yiner slightly ahead. Get a glimpse into the future with him behind the plate home run a caught stealing in this game so far and it helped out Hunter Brown after the triple and single to start the inning that double play and a ground out and the third the Astros trail two to one. Ticket. I forgot about that. What? You've got Verlander starting. Oh, lots going on. Fireworks Friday and that cool Minute Maid Park replica. Yeah. Are there tickets left for tomorrow? See you there. I don't know. There might not be many. That's going to be a good night. <laughs> I'll sell you mine. For how much? Oh, we can't negotiate on air. Oh, okay. Here's Yiner leading off. Easy, the Phil. <laughs> Yiner chops one to third. Almost hit that grass dirt cutoff. I would have helped out. Instead, Ramon Arias has. A relatively easy play. Yiner grounds out for the first out. I did notice when Julie was doing that promo, Yiner, when he leads off an inning, including when he hit the home run in the second, does not go to the batting weight. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. Just comes out of the dugout, takes a few swings, and so you don't hear that cue. That yeah, it's like heard. Pavlovian now. <laughs> it is. We should have a pop up as soon as that. <laughs> Here's John Singleton, hit the ball hard, but he lined out his first AB. It is truly his first at bat as an Astro since 2015. His second one has popped high in the air because he had a walk, which was a plate appearance, but not an at bat. Earlier in this series, and Singleton now 0 for 2 as he pops up into shallow right for the second out. Dean Kramer so far allowing three hits to the Astros, one every inning. And he also allowed a walk to Jordan Alvarez. The one run scoring on the Yiner Diaz solo home run. Mauricio Dubon bats with two outs and nobody on. Dubon fouls one back. 
Mauricio was on base three times yesterday, getting the start in center field yesterday. Single hit by pitch and a walk in three at bats, or in four at bats. Well, actually, three at bats. Today, 0 for 2 with this pop up in the right. Quick inning for Dean Kramer. Started the inning with 46 pitches and only needs six pitches in that inning to get through it. Three, four, and five facing Hunter Brown, second time through the lineup. Anthony Santander struck out his first time up on three pitches. Speaking of pitches, there was only five pitches thrown in the top half of this inning. I said six on the way out, but only five needed for Dean Kramer to get three outs in the top of the fourth. Yeah, you don't need to exaggerate. <laughs> So Brown who threw 19 pitches in the third a quick turnaround to get back out on the mound. Here in the fourth. Hunter has allowed three hits first time through the line. I've got helped out by a strike him out throw him out double play last inning. All his outs have been on strikeouts ground outs and that caught stealing. That went up and away one and two on Santander. Now one hit to left field. Mauricio Dubon looks like he has room and does. Mauricio puts it away on the warning track. Santander out number one. Mauricio getting a couple of outfield starts in this series. Center field last night and left field today. I'll bring up Ryan O'Hearn. O'Hearn struck out his first time up. One of four strikeouts for Hunter Brown. That one's off the plate for a ball, 1 0. Oh. Astros return home tonight. Three game series with the Angels, then right back on the road for a three game road trip against Miami before coming back home. Astros will have the day off coming back from Miami, and then they'll play. 13 in a row, so they're in the midst of playing 22 games in 23 days, which is why you see that six man rotation implemented right now. Verlander, JP France, and Jose Urquidy will go against the Angels. And then we should see these same three pitchers that we have seen in the Baltimore series against Miami. Robert Valdez, Christian Javier, and today's starter Hunter Brown. The last of the World Series rings will be given out next week. Whose is it? Yuli. Oh, that's right, Yuli. We got to take it to him. We got to bring the hardware to Yuli. It'll be good to see Yuli. I cannot wait to see Yuli. He's a fan favorite. He's a team favorite. So many teammates probably can't wait to see him. Yeah, I was just going to say, you know what? The real truth of it is, Yuli can't wait to see these guys <laughs> in that clubhouse. That's true. 2 2 pitch. O'Hearn tried to hold up. He does. Josh Miller not real thrilled about that call from Edwin Moscoso. And it's 3 and 2. Let's see if Josh has a point. I got Josh's back. Woo. That was close. Yeah. There we go. That's a better one. That worked out. Fish strikeout for Hunter. More strikeouts than he's had in his previous three starts as he picks up a strikeout here for the second out of the inning. It's just a breaking ball that never got back down. Some of these missed sliders are working out well. I say some of the yeah just these spinners that get up there just aren't able to get to kind of give the illusion that they might get back to the zone but start that swing you can't stop it. Now Ryan Malcastle who grounded out. Takes one in on his hands, 1 0. This is an Orioles lineup, top to bottom. Just really solid hitters. There's not one guy that stands out with like an 850 OPS or higher. They have three guys right around 800 or better with the OPS, and a lot of guys with double digits and home runs. Mount Castle 
has that prodigious power which we saw on Tuesday. Just one through nine not a lot of holes but also not a lot of superstars carrying the offense. They sit right now with the best record in the AL. Well I think that they can be pitched to but they can also destroy mistakes like we saw that first game against Farmer Valdez. That ball on a one two pitch hit into right Kyle Tucker comes on and makes the play good inning for Hunter Brown his second one two three inning of the day. We're going to head to the fifth Astros are down two to one. To go today. We'll see if the Astros can put up one fourth of those runs, might be enough. Hey, on cue, maybe Jeremy Pena sending one to deep left, but back there to make the play in this cavernous left field. And crashing into the wall is Ryan O'Hearn. Pena hit one deep to left that would have been out in plenty of stadiums, but not here. Yeah, 396 foot out. Didn't put a Unbelievable charge into it, but definitely put enough into it to have it be out of most ballparks except here. Pretty nice play by O'Hearn crashing into the wall for the first out. Now here's Jake Myers. Jake grounded out his first time up around the bunt, takes a pitch on the outside corner for a strike 0 1. Jake's ground out the second hardest hit ball of the day for the Astros behind the Yiner Diaz home run. This ball golfed into left field. Easy play for O'Hearn this time. He moves to his right. And that's out number two. Kramer settling in. Yeah, that's now five outs in a span of eight pitches. Had a five pitch inning last inning, now a three pitch inning going so far to in this bit with two outs. Jeremy Pena's home run would have been out of 25 other parks. 25 out of 30, it's a homer. Wow. Only American League stadiums are here in Kauffman Stadium that it would not have been out of. Now, Tuve goes after the first pitch and fouls one. Off himself, it appears. It's 0 1. Yeah, that one got him good. David Rackley cleaning an already clean plate to help Altuve out a little. Yeah, 396 foot flyout for Jeremy. There's a strike going too. Astros with one run on three hits. Team Kramer pitching well against them for a third time in his career. But Altuve, another base hit. Two more hits today. And now 50 career hits here in Baltimore and 123 at bats. It's good for a 600 average at Camden <laughs> Yards, it feels like. Just a fastball away, go with it. That countdown's getting real for 2000. Sure down, is. Down to 14 hits left for Altuve. If Bregman can continue a little two out magic here. Alex thought about it, but the pitch was in 1 0. Bregman is lined out and grounded out. 5 for 11 now in this series. Rides high, 2 0. Oh, Jordan Alvarez on deck. Astros have just two earned runs scored against Kramer over 21 and a third innings. That last pitch didn't have to be a strike, but it is. Tuve will wait, wait. Yep, he's good. Ask for time from Larry Vanover. Yeah. 
Altuve having a good time in this final game of the road trip. There's a ball down the line, just foul. Bregman a little too quick. It's two and two. Found out a couple of road trips ago that Altuve is a big coffee connoisseur. They're walking in together talking about coffees. Might got a good cup today. <laughs> a little cup of cheer. It's also called having two hits in a game. Well, that's her mood stabilizers. Coming off three yesterday. Yeah. And he's in Camden Yards. It's going to be a big smile. Oh, my goodness. He's going. The biggest jump ever. And there's a base <laughs> hit to right field. Altuve's thinking about trying to score, and Pettis holds him up. Altuve got such a big jump. Bregman saw it and just served one to right field as he points over to Altuve for the greatest jump of the year. There's the coffee kicking. It is. That's some late life. He's having the time of his life out there. <laughs> he was literally halfway to the second. How did he not step off? Altuve. Yeah, but with him getting that great jump, he made a turn at third base and took a peek out to Santander, who had to actually rush that ball in. Yeah, he forced Gary to hold him up because he wanted to think about scoring on a single from first, the old Willie Mays play. Here's Jordan Alvarez. Jordan, a good rip at a fastball, fouls it away. Astros with two out hits from Altuve and Bregman. Now they have five hits in the game. Jordan has a single and a walk today. Saw a lot of pitches in his last plate appearance. He's down to the count here, 0 and 2. Altuve reading that move pretty good. And here he is making that turn. Saying, you better bring it in quickly. I was thinking of scoring on you yelling out to Santander. Rope, but a great play by Frazier. Taking his cap off Dean Kramer on that play by the second baseman as Frazier just saved this game for being tied on a ball hammered by Jordan Alvarez. You know who that Astro is? Send your guesses at ATT Sportsnet SW. We'll share the answer to our name that Astro powered by Reliant later on in the show. Oh, here he is, the guy that made the great play defensively on a 115.2 mile an hour smash from Jordan Alvarez. Adam Frazier, we showed you before the game, and the outs above average does not have very good numbers, but he made a phenomenal play to keep this game an Oriole 2 1 lead. Yeah, how many times you've seen a great play and they lead off? <laughs> Here's the strike, it's 101. Astros try to get to Dean Kramer there with two outs. Jose Altuve tried to think about scoring from first on a single. Altuve has this one go right to him. He can take his time and get the opposing second baseman for the second time today. A couple of four threes off the bat of Frazier, one away in the fifth. Hunter Brown's been good today. Triple and a home run have hurt him. Other than that, he's only allowed one single the rest of the way. Four in the third innings, three hits, no walks. He has struck out five. Here's Austin Hayes, one of the five strikeout victims. First pitch strike, 0 and 1. Cutter worked the second game of this road trip. The Astros winning that game 7 to 3 at Yankee Stadium. Hunter picking up his eighth win of the year. He has won his last two starts, and the Astros have won his last three starts overall. And all three before today have had the exact same lines pretty much. Six innings, two runs, two earned runs with four strikeouts. And there's been at least one home run in all three of those starts, and today the same thing. So far, two runs with a home run in the mix as he pitches here in the fifth. Hunter strikeout total already ahead of where he's been his last three starts. He's got five today. Yeah, pitch counts in good shape too. 
Would have liked that edge that Kramer has gotten. Might have had himself a strikeout right there. Good pitch, 97. Called third strike, gets the top of the zone. Hayes doesn't like the call, but it looked like a pretty good one from David Rackley. That's strikeout number six for Hunter Brown. And now word from Coors Light. Houston fans, Coors Light is keeping Texas chill all season long. The world's most refreshing beer is made to chill. Here's Ramon Arias with two outs and nobody on. Arias tripled off the wall in right field. Came around to score the go-ahead run in the third inning. Arias missed yesterday's game with a heel contusion, playing third base in the game Tuesday and again today. He's been a good player for the Orioles since being picked up on waivers from St. Louis. He's gone through the transformation of the Baltimore Orioles, going from 110 losses two years ago to try and get to the playoffs this year. Only happened once in Major League history. The team is transformed from a 110 loss team to a playoff team within two years. And you saw that firsthand when you first started broadcasting. Yeah, luckily I was only working half the games. <laughs> so I wasn't responsible for all those losses. But yeah, it was kind of amazing to see that quick turnaround from 2014 to a wild card playoff team, wild card winning playoff team. In the Houston Astros in 2015. They were just a couple of ways from shocking the Kansas City Royals, too. That kind of set the stage for what has become the golden era of Astros baseball. Yep. Seven straight appearances in the ALCS. Ground ball towards Bregman. Two big hops. Alex makes the play. Hunter Brown has retired eight in a row since that RBI single by James McCann in the third. Good pitching duel. 2 1. We head to the sixth. Our concern, as good as Adolis Garcia, Luis Robert Jr., have been, Kyle Tucker is better. Now, that was one of the best at bats I've ever seen, just considering the circumstances, considering the opponent, considering the stage of the game, going against Felix Bautista, who had gone. 17 previous innings, only allowing seven hits, four walks, and 31 strikeouts without a run. Getting down 0-2 in the count. And ending up seeing nine pitches before that grand slam. And he followed it up with a two-run home run yesterday in his first at bat. Tuck also hit the ball over 101 miles an hour three times yesterday. But only had one hit to show for it, that home run. Kramer has been working around a little bit of traffic in the third and the fifth innings. Astros stranded two each inning, including a runner on third in each of those. There's a swing and a miss, one and two. Get ready for the Yiner donut drop. Yiner. On cue. Always know who's on deck. And Tucker goes down on strikes. Tuck hasn't enjoyed his at bats against Dean Kramer over the years. Now 0 for 6 against this Orioles right hander. Yeah, he is definitely the Astros kryptonite. Even if they square it up, it's right at somebody or the defense makes a great play on him. Two of the three strikeouts for Kramer today coming against Kyle Tucker. Now the one guy who has provided the Astros run, Yiner Diaz will bat. Yiner hits the ball hard to center field, but right there is Austin Hayes. Told you. Another hard hit out for the Astros, two away. 106.5 line out. Wow. Got to bring up John Singleton. Jordan has by far the hardest hit baseball of the game last inning with two on and two outs 115.2 on that inning ending ground out on the great play by Adam Frazier. So he hit that ball harder than his home run. Yeah. Yiner, nothing to show for it. 
What if John Singleton picks up his first hit in an Astros uniform in over eight years? He's looking for it today. He's 0 for 2. He played with the Brewers 29 at bats this year, went 3 for 29 for Milwaukee with a double. Really tore it up at Triple A between the Brewers affiliate in Nashville and the Astros in Sugarland. He's got a 3 0 count here as Kramer has fallen behind with two outs. John played 33 games for the Space Cowboys and had an 11 38 OPS with a dozen home runs. That one's down, ball four, four pitch walk drawn by Singleton. Suit up this season at MLBShop.com. Check out the largest selection of authentic caps, t shirts, collectibles, and more. Gear up with your Houston Astros at MLBShop.com. Mauricio Dubon's put the ball in the air a couple of times today. A fly out to center and a fly out to right. And this one fouled straight back, 0 and 1. Walked by Kramer the second he's allowed today. That's five straight starts allowing two walks or more. But for the most part, his pitch count's been in pretty good order. He's thrown 50 strikes out of 76 pitches. Ahead of Dubon, 0 and 2. Set and Kramer gets Dubon chasing for the final out of the inning. Two strikeouts in the inning, four in the game for Kramer. He's gone through six innings against the Astros, only allowing one run. It's two one O's. It's getting the opposing catcher James McCann, but strike him out, throw him out, double play. Jonathan Singleton can't make that play as it gets by him into right field. Tucker's got a chance to throw up McCann. And the throw, did he tag him? Yes! Great tag by Pena. Great throw by Tucker. Out is the call from Chris Cuccioni in second. What a play for the Astros to start the inning. Looked like he got the tag on the feet. That was a pretty impressive play by Tucker just to make that even that close out there at second base. Looks like the Orioles are going to challenge it. There's that play by Tucker. Ball from Just up the a little out, bit. Did he get base. it on the feet before the hands got in? Second look, I'm not sure he got him. McCann's convinced he's safe. He has not even thought about leaving the bag. Here's a great look. Oh, what is it that is the hand on the bag when he gets him? That's the key. He did get him. But go where's the patented TK mosaic? We got a mosaic coming, Blummer. Everybody's favorite. Everybody's going to be looking at a mosaic. And yeah, I don't know. That hand might be on when he gets him. You're going to have to freeze it, mosaic it. Play a little music in the background. Whoa. Does it, is it enough to overturn it? That's what we're thinking about here. Astros are not going to get it confirmed, I can tell you that. They're hoping for a stance. They're hoping it's not overturned. Man, that's close. It's really close. It's so close. It's just, does a hand hit the bag right before the tag? What do you have? I got palms down. You got safe? Yeah. On overturned. review. Here we go. The call on the field's overturned. Runner is safe. Baltimore is the for challenge. 
Good try by Tuck and Payton. Really was. Just missed getting that out in second base. Instead, it's a leadoff double for McCann, who's now two for two. That owns two of the four hits against Hunter Brown today. That'll bring up Adley Rutschman. Well, with that double and the four hits, the Orioles have hit for the cycle in this game. Only one single, three extra base hits. There you go. There's going to be another base hit, and that'll be an RBI. Rutschman, who doesn't often go out to the first pitch, has done so a couple of times in this series with success as he makes it a 3 to 1 Orioles lead. So a hustle double turns into an RBI for Rutschman. Rutschman doing his best to keep the Orioles from getting swept. He has two of the three RBIs in this game. Trying to keep that streak going to 76 consecutive series without a sweep. Since Rushman joined the team, and now Hunter gets a little visit from Yiner Diaz as Gunnar Henderson will bat with nobody out. Gunnar 0 for 2 today. Ground out to third and a ground out to short. After that first fastball and misses 0 and 1. The Orioles have hit the ball at 100 miles an hour or better five times today, and they've all resulted in hits. The Astros have not had the same fortune. They've hit a number of balls over 100 miles an hour, and they've had a couple of outs in that mix. Just one of five hitting the ball over 100 miles an hour. The Orioles five for five. Here's an 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Hunter Brown wow. make Gunnar Henderson. Good visit by Yiner. How about that? Quick work getting the rookie shortstop on three pitches. Fastball slider fastball. Two swings and misses at the fastball up out of the up above the zone. Those are two of the candidates for rookie of the year. I would say. Hunter's got a little bit of a head start, but Hunter Brown probably one of the lead candidates amongst pitchers in the American League for Rookie of the Year. Here's Anthony Santander. Santander has struck out and flied out to left. Hunter making his 22nd start of the season. It's a pop up here. Yiner Diaz looks into the overcast sky and puts it away. Not an easy sky today here in Baltimore for the second out. So here you see some of the top candidates. Josh Young obviously will not be playing for a few weeks, maybe till the end of the season for the Rangers with that fractured thumb. But Gunnar Henderson, the Japanese rookie, Masataka Yoshida in Boston. Yiner Diaz is in there. Well, just a. Uh, Give it a little bit of context. I mean, Yiner has played 30 or 40 games less than those guys on the left hand side. There is a call strike to Ryan O'Hearn, 0 and 1. And Hunter Brown would probably be your leading pitcher candidate. You're one of the top pitchers right now. Yiner leads. Rookie pitchers with a 2.1 war. Tanner Bybee next closest at 1.9 amongst pitchers. 0 and 2 the count to O'Hearn. O'Hearn's had some struggles with Brown today, a couple of swinging strikeouts. Hunter now with seven strikeouts. Last time he struck out eight was when he got 
Eight strikeouts on the Mariners in three innings of work in that crazy game at Minute Maid Park back on July 7th. Only lasted three innings, gave up eight hits, and struck out eight of his nine outs. Trying to hold up and no swing. One and two. Astros down three to one. They have been able to get to this Orioles bullpen in the first two games of the series. Scored five runs in the eighth and ninth on Tuesday. Five runs in the eighth and ninth on Wednesday's game. Including getting to their reliever of the month, Felix Bautista, who won back-to-back -back months and three times this year, getting to him on Tuesday. No bullpen going right now for Baltimore as Dean Kramer has worked a pretty good pitch count through six innings. Another visit from Yiner here. Kramer has thrown 78 pitches through six. Hunter's approaching 90 in his start, and this could be his final inning. He usually does not go 100 pitches for Dusty Baker. Time for a word from Reliant. Reliant, official energy provider of the Houston Astros. Tried to hold up, another pitch down. There goes the runner, another throw out for Yiner Diaz. They're going to say no swing. The second base umpire, Chris Guccione, checking with the home plate umpire, David Rackley, to make sure it wasn't a strikeout. It was not. It's going to be a caught stealing again for Yiner. He picks off another runner, second time today, and his ninth on the season. This inning, the last time out, a fly ball that went 396 feet. He was a day early. He hit this tomorrow. It's a homer at Minute Maid Park, but unfortunately not here. This one slowly hit the shortstop Henderson makes the play on the first pitch of the seventh inning. Team Kramer's had a couple of low pitch innings especially that fourth where he only had to throw five pitches so sitting at 79 pitches one out into the seventh. Kramer's one complete game came against the Astros last year. And his second longest outing of his career last season was seven and two thirds innings against the Astros as well. He has not gone more than seven innings in any outing this season. Fires around the bunt, bunts it a little close to the mound. Kramer picks it up, his throws high and Jake still called out. Omar Lopez, the first base coach, says we may want to look at this one. Jake's going to run back to the dugout. He doesn't agree with Omar. And we're going to see if the Astros challenge here. Yeah, the only question is, did he get the tag on the helmet of Jake Myers? Why did the helmet have to stay on this time? I know, right? Omar was convinced he was safe. Jake was Houston convinced he was out. out. Well, he was not on the bag. Base. The throw took Mountcastle up off the bag, and I'm not sure he got that tag on him. Here's another look. Oh, yeah. Easily safe. Why was Jake giving up first? I don't know. Too nice of a guy. It's like the crew chief, Larry Vanover, has done this a long time. I'm out. Got a little too much faith. <laughs> Jake's going to get this one over. Well, the Astros are going to get this one overturned. Jake's going to reach. Good job by Omar. Signaling right away. He got a good view of it. So that'll be a bunt hit for Jake Myers. You would think. I doubt they give him an error on that. They're giving everybody hits these days, TK. You're right. You wish you were still playing? Not really. Okay. Yeah. Some <laughs> internal body parts that just <laughs> broke down with you and that thought. <laughs> All right, here's a definitive look. We're going to get the call as we look at this. Upon review, the call on the field is confirmed. The runner is out. What? Houston loses their challenge. What happened? No, 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 no. They called him out. They're saying the foot's on the bag with the catch. Oh. What? That's a definitive look at the foot being on the bag? All right. Wow. But it definitely, definitely did not get the tag down. No. So the foot was still on the bag for Mountcastle. I did not see that part of the play. I was more looking at the tag. Oh, two quick outs for Kramer here. Yeah, two pitches, two outs. 
Jose Altuve is usually an aggressive hitter. Altuve with two hits today was robbed of a hit his first time up on a great play by Arias. And this one bounced foul and one. Astros have not caught many breaks today. Whether it's been high exit belows turned into outs or that call that just barely goes the Orioles way with Mountcastle keeping a spike maybe on the base as he first caught that. So Jake was right after all. <laughs> Kramer this year has thrown 100 pitches in three starts. Sitting at 83 right now. The Orioles have had their lockdown eighth and ninth inning guys of Yanir Cano, Felix Bautista all season. We'll see if Kramer goes beyond this inning. Altuve well, sends one high in the air to center field. That sends Austin Hayes back, still going back, looking for the wall, reaching up, and it is. Gone a home run. Jose Altuve hits one out to center. A ball that kept carrying over the 410 mark at center field. Altuve's third hit of the game and his ninth home run of the season. According to Statcast, that ball went 403 feet over the 410 foot sign. This ball was lofted at 37 degree launch angle right here. You can see how Tuve barreled it up. This ball just continuing to drift to center field, eventually getting out. Ball is moving today. I think that baseball realized who hit it and where we're at and just decided to carry. Wow, Altuve hits one out to the 410 mark in left center field. Austin Hayes. Had a nice try, but couldn't come up with it. And now all of a sudden we have a one run game. Altuve with a single, a double, and a home run today. Here's Bregman, one for three. Lined out his first time up, grounds it out his second time, and a single his third time up. Has a 2 0 count here. And now that call pretty yeah. large at first base. Keeping it interesting, only one run behind the great Dean Kramer. And the Astros keep adding to their total of home runs from the seventh inning on. Tucker with that grand slam in the ninth on Tuesday night, adding to that total. That one literally off the end of the bat for Bregman, two and two. So Altuve with a three hit game had three hits yesterday had a hit on Tuesday. He loves hitting here in Baltimore. Fifty one career hits and one hundred twenty four career bats here at Oriole Park at Camden Yard. Well Bregman in a battle here with a two two count. I think it's more and more likely as Kramer pitches in the seventh inning with his pitch count now about to be 90 that this could be his last inning his last four starts he's been between 87 and 95 pitches. And we mentioned the combo of Cano and Bautista. That have helped carry the Orioles to their. AL best record this season now it's three and two and you've got Jordan Alvarez waiting on deck Jordan. Smashed a baseball hardest hit baseball of the day. His last time up. But was retired on a great play by Frazier. Let's see if Bregman can find a pitch to drive here. Swing and a miss. Foul tip caught by McCann to end the inning. Five strikeouts now for Kramer. The Astros get one run closer on the Altuve home run is three to two. Seventh inning stretch time here at Oriole Park at Camden Yards. 3 2 ball game. We're going to check in in our rooms to go lounge with Esh and Mike. Weekend, we will have Brownie and Bill Doran 
on the broadcast during the course of the weekend. Ryan O'Hearn leading off here against Hunter Brown. First pitch swinging. Bounces a foul. It's 0-1. O'Hearn was at the plate last inning when Yiner Diaz cut down Adley Rushman to end the inning. So Hunter Brown right now at 90 pitches, and there's bullpen action as we start the inning. Brown delivers a pitch below the zone. It's 1-1. Phil Maton warming up as we start the seventh. Hunter so far allowing three runs on five hits. He has struck out seven. As O'Hearn tags one to right, Tucker going back, and that one will be off the base of the wall. Tucker plays it back in quickly. O'Hearn will get into second, sliding with a double. Another extra base hit for a Baltimore Oriole. Fortunately, this one stayed in the yard. Tucker did his best to play it back in. It's going to be a pinch runner now for O'Hearn after that double. That was a breaking ball that stayed up and in. O'Hearn thought he got it all, especially the way the ball's been flying here today, but it ended up just short, hitting off that right center field wall. And McKenna coming in as a pinch runner. Now Ryan Mountcastle, the batter. Up and in, 1 0. Hunter has not gotten an out in the seventh inning since he pitched against Washington on June 13. Hunter threw 99 pitches that day and going seven innings against the Nationals. That was seven innings of four hit shutout baseball that day. Today on a warm muggy day trying to get through the seventh here Mauricio Dubon will watch this one go out try to make a leafy catch but that's a two run home run for Ryan Mountcastle. Hunter Brown's pitch count elevated stays in here in the seventh and gives up a double and a home run and all of a sudden a one run game is a five to two game. That's a slider that just spun out on that inner third. So the Astros trying to extend Hunter into this seventh inning. We've seen him give up two quick runs. Hunter's last three starts, all six innings of work, had 88 pitches, 95 pitches, and 93 pitches. Started this inning with 89 pitches. He's given up a double and a home run here. Still out there is Adam Frazier bats. And it's an 0 2 count. Frazier's grounded out a couple of times to Jose Altuve. And there's a base hit in the left field. Three straight hits to start the seventh. Dusty trying to get an extra inning out of his young right hander. And he is going to come out now after three straight hits. As Hunter Brown has given up three hits and two runs in the inning. That's a, a slider that just kind of stopped in the inner third, and Mount Castle made him pay. Great try by Dubon, but nothing he could do as that ball went in to the base of the camera in left center field. So Hunter Brown had a quality start through six, but gives up a couple of runs in the seventh. It's no longer a quality start, and he will leave down five to two. Phil Maton will be on when we come back. Responsible for the base runner out there, but our Crawford Bach call to the bullpen is going to get Phil Maton in there again. 53rd appearance, his ERA at 3.10. It's been rough since July, trying to correct some issues, get that spin back. 57 strikeouts in those 52 and a third. Well, Maton, as usual, acquires an inherited runner by far the most for the Astros. Astros. Number of inherited runners, though, not even close to some of the guys on the Orioles bullpen. Maton leads the team now with 31 inherited runners. As he has a runner on first with nobody out facing Austin Hayes. Orioles bullpen after Maton has 31 inherited runners scoring, or 31 inherited runners. 
on the season. 16 have scored. 15 is the next highest in terms of inherited runners. That's Hector Neres. In the Baltimore bullpen, they have Dalman with 43 inherited runners. CNL Perez with 25. Yanir Cano with 27. Fujinama and Webb. Although well, Webb was with the Angels most of the year. 22. So they have a lot more mid-inning pitching changes here in Baltimore than the Astros have had most of the season. Maton getting ahead of Hayes 0 2. Austin struck out twice against Hunter Brown, who goes six innings plus three batters in the seventh. Misty Baker trying to get Hunter through seven today. It did not work out with a double home run and single to the first three batters. That went up and in, one and two. In the top of the zone, two and two the count. Orioles with three hits in this inning, eight in the game now. After getting ahead, 0 and 2, the count's now full. Brown's going to leave this game with an ERA right now of 4.23. He is responsible for the runner on first. It feels like Hunter's numbers on the season haven't quite matched up with how well he has pitched at times. Today seemed like a better outing than a five run, six inning outing. There goes the runner, and the pitch is a strike, and that's another strike him out, throw him out. Yiner Diaz throws out his third runner of the day. That's 12 caught stealings in 30 attempts now on the year. He is three for three in gunning down runners today. Hayes didn't offer that fastball. It caught the outside corner and out from behind home plate comes Yiner Diaz, helping contribute to his second strike him out, throw him out in this game. Not even close. New career high for Yiner Diaz. Three caught stealings in a game. Now Ramon Arias will bat. Yiner's also contributed one of the two runs for the Astros with a solo home run. Quite a day for the young catcher. Arias with a one for two day, tripling a run scored in the third. That one hit hard. What a play by Bregman. Backhand snag. He robs the other gold glove third baseman. Breggy might be making a bid for a gold glove this year. He has played great D. And Maton gets through the seventh. Alex has been playing a great third base. That is a tough in between hop on a shot. Comes up and throws a strike over to Jets. Get to Astros.com slash promotions. Eighth inning baseball. Astros need a rally here, and they will try to get things started against the former Astros, CNL Perez. Saw CNL the other day. Pitched well, pitching relatively decent on the season with a 4.19. He is in there because the Astros have back to back lefties to start the inning, but stop me if you've heard this before. The lefties are okay against lefties. Jordan 321 with a 1010 OPS. Tucker 341 with a 1002 OPS. First pitch called a ball 1 0. Only time Jordan was retired, as you see his numbers against lefty relievers as the first batter that the lefty faces. He hits 440 against them. There's a strike, it's 101. Jordan struck out against his former teammate and fellow Cubano, CNL Perez, yesterday. Jordan now two for four against CNL. Oh, and he goes after that pitch, waves through it. One and two. Don't see that too often, missing by that much. Well, Jordan had a good night the first night here Tuesday. His swing looked a little off yesterday, and that's a rare way, but a pitch well off the plate is one and two. Chase upstairs, two and two. 
Astros have scored five runs in the eighth and ninth the last two games. Four yesterday in the eighth, one in the ninth. They flipped it the day before with one in the eighth and four in the ninth. They need another rally today. Off the plate, three and two. Jordan, Kyle Tucker, and Yiner Diaz first three to face CNL. And after that pitch, he wasn't sure how far that was going to slide, whether it was going to stay on the outside corner or not. So protecting with two strikes. Pitch in, fastball 97 for Seattle. Gets Jordan on back to back games. Looks so good against Jordan. Kind of effectively wild with that velocity. Here's Tuck. We mentioned Tuck hitting some bad luck yesterday. Tucker hit the hardest ball of the day for the Astros yesterday and hit into a double play when he faced CNL Perez. Time he pops one foul and out of play. Tucker glad to see Dean Kramer out of there. Kramer struck him out twice, two of Kramer's five strikeouts. All strike. Tuck's going to have to battle down 0 2. Tucker has not had a hit against Perez in four at bats. 0 for 4 with a strikeout. Behind her. He's the only one that uses that donut, I guess. Or he's the only one that knocks it off the so bat. So he just goes way. over to the concrete to make sure it gets it off the bat. Astros have never led today. They trailed one nothing, tied it up, trailed three to one, made it a three to two game. But two big runs for the Orioles in the bottom half of the seventh have them out in front five to two. Tucker off the end of the bat, and that's a beauty right in the right center. So Tuck with a base hit on base for the first time today. He's a one out base runner here in the eighth. This Sunday's game against the Angels is another Los Astros game on AT&T Sportsnet 2. Our telecast will be on the main AT&T Sportsnet channel with the Spanish telecast on AT&T Sportsnet 2. Check your local listings for your channel location. Well, here's Yiner Diaz. Yiner hit a home run against Dean Kramer. Goes after that first pitch fastball and misses its 0-1. Yiner hitting 175 this year against lefties with one of his 15 home runs against left handers. Guess who's also using that donut? John Singleton on deck. It's 101. Astros down three. Yiner lined out his last time, hit a ball harder than he did on his home run, 106.5. This one hit in the air to right field, sending Santan there back. He's on the warning track and he'll make the catch. Tucker thought about tagging, but he's going to hold up as Yiner sends one to the wall and right for the second out. John Singleton will face the lefty. This is a stretch in the lineup with three lefties and a four batter span for CNL Perez to deal with. Jose Abreu getting the day off. Singleton tries to check his swing. It's 0 1. Brian Stanek warming up in the Astros bullpen. So is Hector Neris. There's Stanek who pitched. 
and picked up the win in the game here on Tuesday night. One and two the count. Tapper slowly hit towards first. Flip to CNL Perez. He barehanded and he can't ha hang on. Singleton's going to be safe. CNL Perez barehanded it, but didn't catch it cleanly. And John Singleton's going to reach. The Astros have two on and will bring the tying run to the plate. Didn't look like that terrible of a toss that he had to go to the bare hand with it, but credit Singleton for hustling out of the box. You can see just casually taking his eye off the ball, going with the bare hand and clanked it. It's a perfectly fine toss to catch with your glove. You can see the body English on Mountcastle kind of wondering why CNL did that. Well, that's going to be the last batter that CNL Perez will face. The Astros have two runners on. That'll be an error to extend the inning. We'll have a pitching change here in the eighth inning with the outs. A couple of runners on after that error on CNL Perez. Orioles going to the back into their bullpen. Any air Cano is going to come on with a couple of runners on base on the season. A 1.82 ERA. One of those earned runs off the bat of Jeremy Payne the last time out in game one of this series. That's a gift. Mauricio Dubon walks out of the batter's box as he didn't like that first call. He's down to the count 0 1. Slider that never got back. Wasn't even caught that well by Rushman. A little tapper off the plate. It's going to be foul or it would have been trouble. And it's 0 2 on Dubon. Cano, who has been so good for the Orioles this year, is a setup man that he made the All Star team. On here to try and keep this at a 5 2 game. The Astros working with an extra out with that CNL Perez error. Now this Thursday afternoon crowd here at Oriole Park at Camden Yards making some noise with two strikes and two outs with two on. Tucker on second, Singleton on first. Dubon down 0 and 2. Just enough to stay alive. Reaching out across that plate. Cano came on in Tuesday's game, allowed an inherited run to score. Kyle Tucker was on base. Dubon punches one right center field that is going to be down for a hit Tucker's going to score the Astros have scored in the eighth inning all three games in this series and now it's a two run game five to three. Never say die Houston Astros pick up another one Dubon fighting that tough slider from Cano. That one off the outside edge just elevated enough for him to be able to get out there and poke that the other way to keep this inning alive. And here's Jeremy Payne who had that great at bat against Cano in game one of this series in that eighth inning. Pena has had an RBI base hit in his final at bat in the first two games of the series. Not sure if this will be his final at bat or not but he bats here in the eighth with two outs. He's over three today. Flied out to deep left field his second time up. He's also struck out and grounded out. Singleton on second, Dubon on first. And now Pena down the count 0 2. Jeremy got to a 2 2 count against Cano on Tuesday before he hit the hardest baseball of the night, Tuesday night, for an RBI hit. Uses time out here. Well, the Astros scoring a run in the seventh to make it a one run game. Now scoring a run in the eighth to cut it to within two after the Orioles scored two in the bottom half of the seventh. That's 
well wide. One and two. Tenel has been good all season long, but those numbers in April and May and June have been better than they have been in July and August so far. And Pena stays alive. He's yet to see a slider in this at bat. Everything's been that two seam fastball at 97 and 99. Singleton on second, Dubon on first. Dubon represents a tie game. Pena hit that slider for a hit on Tuesday. That one was a changeup at 92, missing in, and now he's got that same 2 2 count where he hit the slider on Tuesday night. Yeah, he'll throw that fastball a lot to right handed hitters, but he'll actually be a split between the slider and the changeup. He threw Jeremy six sliders on Tuesday. None so far today. There it is. Actually, that was a fastball that just kind of cut across the plate. Pandy goes down on strikes. Cano comes in to allow one run, but strands two more. Astros now trail five to three. Actually, a big inning in that first game of this series, going a shutout inning. His ERA at 4.50 and in 38 innings has 39 strikeouts. Now Ryan kept the game at six to three, ended up getting the win when Kyle Tucker hit that grand slam in the ninth inning. Now Stanek will face the nine one and two hitters for the Baltimore Orioles. The nine hitters had a nice day. James McCann. McCann has driven in a run with a single in the third inning, doubled and scored a run in the sixth inning as he bats for the third time. Hunter Brown went six innings. Phil Maton a shutout inning. And now Ryan Stanek on in the eighth, trying to keep it a two run game. First pitch misses wide, 1 0. Oh. 98 also off the plate. McCann, the veteran catcher, facing Ryan Stanek here. McCann played five seasons with the Tigers, a couple of years with the White Sox, and the last two years with the Mets before joining Baltimore. There's a swinging strike, two and one. Only the second appearance for Stanek on this road trip. Didn't pitch in the four games against the Yankees. Pitch down and a swing, says Larry Vanover. And the count's two and two. James McCann not real thrilled with that call. This is the Woo Pig matchup. That's right. The school starting up here real soon. Arkansas Razorback versus Arkansas Razorback. Yeah. You're going to have a vested interest in Arkansas athletics for a few years. Did you say invested? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm making a pretty healthy donation to the Razorback Nation over the next four years. My wife is currently moving three of my four daughters into Fayetteville. Swing and a miss. Battle of Razorbacks won by Ryan Stanek as he gets James McCann for the first out of the eight. Yeah, we'll pick for our guy. Came with the heat just off that outside edge, but McCann trying to fight that 99 mile an hour mile, mile an hour heater and lost. A catching combo of James McCann and Adley Rutschman now four for six on the day. With three runs batted in, Rutschman pops one high in the air. Stanek's thinking about it, but he's going to defer to Alex Bregman. Good idea for the second out. Ryan came flying off the mound. And there's two away. Let's check out the Verizon projected starters for tomorrow night's game with the Angels. You've got Justin Verlander making his 500th career start. He'll be one of two current active pitchers with 500 or more stars joining his former teammate Zach Greinke. Reed Detmers, the lefty, will get the start 
for the Los Angeles Angels. The Astros have done pretty well against Reed in his two starts against them this year. Here's Gunnar Henderson taking a strike. Stanek, when he pitched on Tuesday, got the three, four, five hitters in order. Now trying to get nine, one, and two. As he's one and one with Gunnar Henderson. Looking ahead for the Astros in the ninth inning, Jake Myers will be due up. The Baltimore Orioles have their big closer, Felix Bautista, warming. It'll be Myers, Altuve, and Bregman if it gets beyond that, Alvarez and Tucker. Bautista had not allowed a multi run inning since last September. When the Astros got him that year as well, until he gave up the four here on Tuesday. 2 1, set high in the air to left field. Dubon towards the line. Ryan Stanek will have another 1 2 3 inning here in Baltimore. That led to some big things for the Astros in the ninth last time. We'll see what happens on a Thursday afternoon. Houston Astros baseball is presented by Lock Solutions, H Town's favorite free cast concrete provider. Lock leading free cast. And by rooms to go. Get fashion, style, and quality. I was excited, getting fans excited, I should say. 38% the winner. Ticket. Thanks, Julia. Hopefully, we see Jordan Alvarez in this inning. That means at least one runner will be on base. The Astros need at least one runner to bring the tying run to the plate as they face Felix Bautista. Be Bautista's second appearance in this, but you can see against the Astros in four career games, a 19.64 ERA. That's eight runs. In three and two thirds against everybody else, he has a 1.32. So the Astros see the ball well out of the right hand of Batista. They got him for four runs in two thirds of an inning in the first game of that series to take game one. Astros were down three on Tuesday in rally. Now they're down two today. And both games that started with the number nine hitter on Tuesday it was John Singleton pinch hitting for Martin Maldonado, and he drew a walk. Today it's Jake Myers batting for the fourth time. Got a little bit of that Eroldis Chapman feel to the Astros versus Chapman and then Chapman against the rest of the league. They just find a way to put together at bats against guys who have pretty nasty stuff. Big batter here. Jake can get on base. He pops one foul, and that's going to drift towards the dugout but stay in play, and that'll be out number one. Jake retired for the fourth time today. It's a big out for Bautista, having given up that four spot last time on 30 pitches. And now he'll face Jose Altuve. Altuve right in the middle of that four run rally when he looped one into the left against Bautista. Jose with a three hit game going today. Jose hits one high in the air deep to left field sending Austin Hayes all the way back to the wall reaches up it's off the top of his glove Altuve will get to second base and the Astros will bring the tying run to the plate Hayes who started the game in center field moved to left had that had that fly ball go off the top of his glove and Altuve has his fourth hit of the game. I think that one even a surprised Altuve he hit this and put his head down. We know it's deep here in left field, but this ball continues to carry. Put Hayes up against that wall, and as he jumped, he's unable to get to it. Just beyond the glove, off the wall. Altuve, a four hit game. Now, Just has to touch it here. <laughs> he loves hitting here. So does the guy on deck, Jordan Alvarez. But first things first, Alex Bregman takes a strike that could have been off the plate. Alex one for four today. Bregman struck out against Bautista on Tuesday night. That one gets by. Altuve is going to get to third. And the Astros will have a runner 90 feet away.
Bregman takes one down at 100 miles an hour, two and one the count. Almost feels as if the Astros just need to see a pitcher maybe once or twice the ball out of the hand. And as soon as they pick it up, they get a pretty good visual and pretty good timing on it. In the grand scheme of things, with the Astros down two runs, Altuve's double versus a triple didn't matter, except for the fact that if he ran hard out of the batter's box, he would have ended up with a cycle today. But he thought that ball was going to end up. Either yeah, he put his head down. Yeah. He did not anticipate that ball hitting off the wall. Now three and one on Bregman. And that one's wide. Ball four. Bregman will be the go ahead run. Excuse me, the tying run on first. The go ahead run striding to the plate in the battle of the two big men, Jordan Alvarez against Felix Bautista, as Bautista continues to struggle against the Astros. Jordan two for two in his career in the battle of large humans. Yeah, this is some big boys going at it right here, both of them about 6'5, six, 6'6. Six, six. The power of Jordan in this ballpark against the power right arm of Felix Batista. And guess who's looming on deck? Kyle Great. Tucker. The Grand Slam man from two nights ago against Batista. So Jordan facing Bautista twice in his career last year in September in this ballpark he saw three splitters and singled on an 0 2 splitter. This time around when he faced him on Tuesday night he saw five fastballs before hitting one off the left center field wall. The last one being a hundred and two mile an hour fastball. So he has seen all splitters last year all fastballs this year in five pitches and now first and third with a tying runs on base. Ready for that first pitch fastball, and he hooks a foul. Got quick on 101. So you got to be sitting fastball, but it's amazing that his hands are quick enough to be out in front of 101. Alvarez has five career home runs in this stadium in his previous 12 games here. Saw the splitter this time and takes a strike, 0 and 2. Tuve on third, Bregman on first, one out in the ninth. Astros down two. Pop up foul, playable. McCann shields his eyes and makes the play, tumbling backward into fair territory. It was a foul ball, but by the time he landed, he had. Tripped into fair territory. That's a big out for Bautista for the second out. Yeah, a couple of splits to get Jordan out of there. Now you've got a rematch of game one when Tucker saw a nine pitch at bat eventually getting to that fastball at 100 miles an hour down and hit an absolute rocket into the right field seats for a grand slam to give the Astros the win. Call that the uh, the ultimate grand slam down three when he hit a slam. This could be the ultimate three run home run down two. Trying to give the Astros the lead with two outs in the ninth. Tucker, 10 RBIs on this road trip. Saw nine pitches against Bautista Tuesday night and hit that slam after getting down on the count 0 and 2. No contact 0 and 1. Tucker sitting on that fastball got a split from Batista. Geiner. Checked his swing on 101, and it's a 1 1 count. Tucker has faced Bautista three times in his career. He's two for three with a double and a home run. Now 
That one's wide, two and one. Yiner Diaz, as you heard a moment ago, on deck. Astros out, hitting the Orioles nine to eight. Trailing five to three, the hero on Tuesday night trying to be the hero again. A little more than 36 hours later. Fastball split. Does he come with the fastball right here? Did again, missing well off the outside corner. So now it's three and one. What do you think Tucker will see here? It's got to go with the fastball. That's his right. best pitch, and you don't want to put that tying run at second base then a base hit ties it up so I'd imagine he's going to challenge him again right here with the fastball goes with the split pulls the string on him and a good pitch can he do it back to back it's amazing that baseball looks like a golf ball in the hand of Felix Batista Bregman will be off as the tying runner from first. Down and in, ball four. The bases will be loaded. Tucker on base for the second straight time. And the Astros have the tying run on second base. The go ahead run on first. And Yiner Diaz at the plate. Another great at bat for Kyle Tucker. More pitches being put on that right arm of Felix Batista. Yiner Diaz hoping for a mistake. Yiner came in hitting 303 against righties this year. He's one for three with a home run against right handers today. And swings and fouls one back at 101 0 and 1. Yiner has a home run, a ground out. He lined out at 106.5 miles an hour, and then he flied out to the wall and right his last time up. Line drive off the glove of Arias. Everybody's going to be safe. Bases remain loaded. It's a one run game. Altuve crosses the plate. Yiner Diaz an RBI single. Wow. That is a huge save by Urias. If he doesn't knock that down, we've got ourselves a tie ball game. You got two outs. You're off at the swing. Bregman got a pretty good break on that, but everybody having to go station to station with that ball knocked down. How about Yiner Diaz staying on a split right there and raking it almost into left field to tie this thing up. And as fate would have it John Singleton getting back to the Astros has an opportunity to have a huge impact in this game. Singleton saw Bautista with the Brewers on June 8th flied out. In that contest then he saw Bautista here on Tuesday night and drew a walk on six pitches. And now he sees him again for the third time this year and the second time in three games. John Singleton looking for his first Astros RBI since 2015. Bases loaded one run game for John. Takes 101 for a strike 0 and 1. Singleton 0 for 3 today he drew a walk. In his third plate appearance, reached on an error his last time up. Bregman on third, Tucker on second, Yiner Diaz on first. This is that fastball, it's 0 and 2. And quite a journey for John Singleton getting back to the major leagues. Not an affiliated ball in 2018, 19, or 20. Played in the Mexican League in 21. Now his journey ends up back in the big league. Looking for a big moment here. Pop up, playable. Gunnar Henderson, the rookie shortstop, puts it away. Astros try to rally against the best closer in the game, winner of the reliever of the month three times this year, and they come up just one run short, leaving the bases loaded here in the ninth. 5-4 the final. The Orioles hold on to win, salvaging one game and keeping their streak alive. That's 76 straight series without a sweep as Bautista 
Got a little dicey, but picked up the save today. Astros postgame show presented by Whataburger. Kevin Eschenfelder, Mike Stan will be your host. Julia Morales getting interviews. You'll hear from Dusty Baker, amongst others. Astros lose 5-4. They're two and a half games back as they head home for a weekend series against the Angels.